Okay, so we're going to continue with assignment one. I had sketched it roughly last in the last uh, class period, and I just did it on the whiteboard. And what I'm asking you guys to do is to come up with an idea for your imagined landscape. I call it a fantasy landscape, but don't let fantasy make you think it needs to be like the genre fantasy, like it has to be Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. And it could be your own fantasy version of the Bahamas, you know, because we're going to composite it together from different places. When I've done compositing jobs like this for clients, they are often things like, give me a really beautiful beachscape so we can print it as a as vinyl digital mural inside this yoga studio. And I have to come up with original imagery, but I'm not going to, I don't have the budget on the project to fly around and, and shoot all these beautiful beaches. So I have to use other people's pixels and then composite them together into my original composition. And that's a, a lot of what concept artists do for the different jobs. Now, the good resources for that is definitely Pixabay. So I'm going to open up Pixabay, which is linked here. And then I also show you this NASA image, which, let's see, I have the image source here. So it's an artistic illustration of Kepler planet 1649C. I'm trying to remember how this came up. It's one that they think would be a habitable planet where liquid water could exist on the planet surface. So it's called a Goldilocks planet. But we haven't sent a probe there. We haven't sent a lander. We haven't gotten photos from the surface. So instead, they commissioned a digital artist, you know, with NASA money to, to do an imagined landscape of what that might look like. And we have a sun and we have, it's actually our sun. And we, or no, maybe it's a different sun. I don't know how far this galaxy is. But then we have water. And it's got a recognizable foreground, middle ground, background. But it's a pretty boring image. And yet it's a full kind of digital composite fantasy. I use this to, when I tell people landscape, this is the default thing they think of. They think of a horizon line, they think of sky, they think of ground, and they think of like clouds or a sun in the sky. You want something a little bit more engaging than this usually for your concept setting. You want there to be a more measured amount of depth so that the foreground is maybe emphasized, or the middle ground is emphasized, or the perspective is interesting so that the background really looms large. My favorite are these mid-ground focused landscapes. And you can see a lot of these in animation backgrounds, especially ones from like Looney Tunes, Warner Brothers, sometimes Disney. And what you'll notice is unlike what the generic image is, these imagined ones are never symmetrical, right? There's not a sun dead center. There's not a flat horizon line that's right in the middle. It's always pushed either up or down, either down, way down, where the horizon line's not even in the frame, or way up. It's often not a flat horizon. It's a bumpy horizon. Sometimes it's a tilted horizon. Even this one, which puts the flat horizon of the ocean, it breaks it with this island right there in the background. So you want to play with asymmetry. You want to play with recognizable foreground, middle ground, background. Foreground, middle ground, background. Foreground, middle ground, background. <laughs> over and over again. But another interesting reason I use this is because it's from NASA, even though it was fairly recent, from 2020, this was paid for with tax money. We all pay our federal income tax, of course. And so those taxes pay for NASA's budget. And because it's a government entity, this is a public domain image. So anyone can use this image for any reason. So we'll be reading about that in chapter two and understanding public domain. Pixabay are not public domain, but they are close. They are what are called Creative Commons open. And then there are, they've added some stipulations. They call it a Pixabay license. So if we look at this landscape, which has foreground, middle ground, background, 
and this looks like a digital composite to me, if we read its content license, it says we're able to use it for free. We're able to use it without having to attribute the author. So we don't have to say where we got it from, though it said it's always appreciated. And then we can also use it and adapt it and modify it into brand new works. Because some Creative Commons don't allow you to modify it. You can use them, but you can't change them at all. What makes it a Pixabay license, because they're trying to cover themselves legally as a company, where people like me donate images, and then they have a community that juries them, puts them out. But they don't want you to sell or distribute content, either in the digital or physical form, on a standalone basis. Which means, unlike a Creative Commons Open or a public domain, they don't want you to just take this image as it is and then sell it. Does that make sense? So that's a resale limitation. But they do allow you to modify it, right? So as long as you change it in some way, which it, which it considers some creative effort, doesn't need to be transformed, it doesn't have to meet a legal guideline of 20% or more, it just has to be altered in some way, then you get to use it for whatever you want. If the content, this is kind of an important one for your, your business outside of education, if your content retains, contains any recognizable trademarks, logos, or brands, because sometimes those things will slip through. So if there, was, if there was a McDonald's sign in this image, even though that image was completely created by the person who donated it, McDonald's is a registered trademark, and that has some limited use tied into it, right? So you want to avoid using those images as your own, even if they make it through Pixabay. And then the last way is to try to avoid deep fakes and to avoid getting sued. And that's don't use the content in any immoral or illegal way, especially content which features recognizable people. So that usually has to do with public figures or celebrities for deep fakes. And then they also added this, you cannot use content in a misleading or deceptive way, which is really, that won't hold up in court. That's a crazy broad statement. Art tries to mislead you all the time. And the art we're going to make is going to, in some ways, mislead the viewer. We want them to think it's believable. But I look at this image, and I already don't think this is a real photo for various reasons. You know, I think it's composited, just like what we're doing. And there's no way to verify that, right? And this was an award winner, an editor's choice. So this is already misleading me in some way. I don't know if this is a real place or not. This is not documentary photography. This is digital art. But that's what a Pixabay license does. So how can I use this best? Well, I found my theme. I'll put it here. I'm going to do a fast food landscape. I found some references especially this one, which I just found in a Google image search of an old McDonald's ad campaign, which created this landscape with their, their kind of fanciful creatures. It's not that the landscape's really made of fast food, but just kind of the colors and the, the vibe of it I liked. That's my guiding inspiration. And then I started to use Pixabay to look up some of these things. So chicken nugget boulders, check. Uh, Hamburger Hills, this is what I found so far. I like the poppy seeds. But now I'm going to go to Pixabay and look for hamburger. Right. And if I get too many, like 5,000, I might try to put Hamburger Hills together, but there's actually a place called Hamburger Hills, so that it's not going to be great. I can look at just the buns of hamburgers because this is what people tag with their images. And I want only photos and I want full color, you know, but that doesn't seem to be a problem. There's just lots of hamburger, lots of food imagery for free use in Pixabay. So this one looks like it's pretty useful. Why? Because it's easy to cut it out. And then because it's Pixabay, this is all very 
high quality and downloadable. It's going to go to my downloads folder. I bring it into my references. It will come in as a JPEG. So as I'm looking through for these hamburger hills, I'm looking for things that are easy to cut out, that give me something unique. And I'm right clicking and saying open link in new tab. That way I can keep my search going and then just open up the new tab, download them, then close it and move on. I think I made a mistake with that first one. I didn't let it fully process before I moved it, but it still worked. So that's good. But that's just why I'm not getting an image preview there. Oh, that's a nice one for hills. It's just a good angle on it. So open in a new tab, download it, then you can close it. In order to get the highest resolution, you do need to sign in, like create an account or use your Google account. But if you don't want to sign in and you want to download something, you just can't download the largest size without it asking you to sign in. But you can do the second to the largest size. And that will work for this assignment. As long as it's at least a thousand pixels in its smallest dimension, it's going to be big enough for us to print at eight by 10, which is our minimal size. All right, so I've got some hamburger hills. Very good. I'm going to change it from a JPEG to a PNG, and that will force me to have the image because I want to have that image. All right. Next, spaghetti swamp. <laughs> Let's see what I get. Actually, I, I think I want a barbecue sauce lake. I like barbecue sauce, but it helps if I spell it right. Ooh, look at those pork ribs. I'm gonna get that pork in there. Yeah, not a lot of just barbecue sauce on its own. But I get some interesting textures. Can use it for middle ground. What if I just look up sauce? Ooh, a marinara, carbonara. I have a whole half of a chicken. That's nice. So you can spend a lot of time just finding interesting references, right? But that's why right clicking and opening up in a new tab can be really helpful. 16 pages of sauces. So if you're not finding what you want with your own um, search terms, <laughs> I like how they they called this goulash, goulash beef pig flesh. Those are the tags. <laughs> and I probably wouldn't have thought to look up pig flesh, but it's good. I apologize to vegetarians and vegans in the class. It'll help you remember. And it looks like most of these photo references have a lot of the, the problems I have with food from, from restaurants. Too many of them have parsley on the top. But I can show you how we get rid of that parsley. Ah, uh, but here we have a nice little spaghetti hill right so i've got quite a few notice i'm going to be getting more than five i need to use at least five but i'm not quite sure what's going to be most useful yet these all go to my downloads folder <laughs> 